Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar, Electrical Trade Theory N2. The webinar has been designed with the objective that we are here to assist you to prepare for the changes in the new curriculum, which, you are, which we have started implementing with N1 and which will move into N2 and N3 later in the year. Our presenter this afternoon is Sunil, who is a seasoned a college lecturer, author, uh, a past national examiner. So his pedigree would suggest that he really knows what he's talking about. And he, this is his fourth webinar for those of you that are joining us for the first time. And thus far, we've had a terrific response from all the lectures that have sat in. So just um, on the right hand side, you'll see our control panel. And perhaps the most important thing for you, if you want to um, pose a question is to use the chat tool. You'll see that towards the bottom under the word polls. Uh, you can pose a question and I, I will take it up with Sunil either during the presentation or at the end. So please feel free if there's anything you're seeking clarity on, post your questions and we'll address it during the course of the um, presentation or right at the end. It just depends how it goes. So welcome and uh, it's over to our presenter Sunil Chatterjee. Thank you very much again. Good afternoon colleagues and welcome to this webinar concerning the curriculum changes you need to prepare for this year. Colleagues, I want to ex express my sincerest gratitude to you all for making time to be part of this session and to all those who sent in their inputs and comments during this, the writing of these series. In this webinar, I want to briefly review and discuss the new curriculum outcomes for Electrical Trade Theory N2, discuss how this affects the learning content, your academic year, and your assessment, then show you how the Macmillan TVET first book for Electrical Trade Theory N2 will support your teaching. As you may know, the TVET curriculum for many subjects have been reviewed and updated by the Department of Higher Education and Training for implementation during the second trimester of this year. As I speak to you, all of the N1 and N4 examiners and moderators have been summoned by the Department of Higher Education and Training to align the N1 and N4 papers that were already set last year to meet the requirements of the new syllabus. These examiners and moderators are expected to wrap up this duty and function by the end of business tomorrow. Let us have a look at what these changes are for the ETTN2 and how it affects your teaching and learning. The general aims of Electrical Trade Theory N2 remains the same. Electrical Trade Theory aims to equip learners with relevant theoretical knowledge to integrate meaningfully into an electrical apprenticeship, an electrical learnership, an electrical contracting environment, an industrial environment, and a power utility environment. Electrical trade theory aims to assist learners to obtain trade-specific skills, knowledge, values, and attitudes so that they can demonstrate competence in the field of electricity. Many changes to the old N2 syllabus were made. The numbering and rewriting of all learning outcomes will now assist greatly with completing the analysis grid which accompanies all assessment tasks. If you remember, the first column of the analysis grid says learning objective numbering only. If we compare the learning content of the old syllabus and the new curriculum, the following important changes have been made. The old module on electronics 
has been removed and the following new modules have been added to the syllabus. Alternating current theory, electrical reticulation, batteries, and renewable energy. These are all the modules of the new syllabus. Notice how good this table is. It clearly indicates the weighting of the calculation and theory type questions. Notice that 18% of this syllabus now covers calculation type questions. The weighting of cognitive skills is the same as the old syllabus. Due to the nature of the subject, a large portion of the assessments will comprise of knowledge type questions. The weighting of cognitive skills allow examiners to include higher order questions to the value of 5%. It will be good to see examiners now beginning to use questions of the higher order type. Let's take a look at the changes that have been made to each module in more detail. This module one on alternating current circuit theory was previously in the N1 syllabus and it has a weighting of 12% with 7% allocated to calculation type questions and 5% allocated to theory type questions. Module two brings together all learning outcomes concerning conductors, insulators, cables, and cable joints. Many of the learning outcomes covered in this module were previously scattered over the N1 and N2 syllabi. The old N1 syllabus, module seven, dealt with conductors, insulators, and cables. The old N2 syllabus, module one, dealt with cables, factors influencing the choice of a cable, and methods of installing cables. Module two dealt with conductor and cable joints, low and high voltage insulators. Module two has a weighting of 12%, with 3% allocated to calculation type questions and 9% allocated to theory type questions. Module three has a weighting of 8% and there are no calculation type questions for this module. The new learning outcomes are state the function of step up and step down transformers, name the different types of power stations in our country, state why power stations are situated far away from major load centers, state why high voltage transmission lines have no neutral conductor, and feeder systems. Module four has a weighting of 10% with no calculation type questions. This module combines the learning outcomes of modules two, four, and six of the old N2 syllabus. The new learning outcomes include timers and day-night switches. Module five, has a weighting of 10% and there are no calculation type questions. The learning outcomes on lead acid batteries were previously covered in the N1 old syllabus. Gel batteries and lithium ion batteries are new learning outcomes. Module six on direct current machines has a weighting of 10% with no calculation type questions. Part of the learning outcomes of this module were previously covered in the N3, in module three of the old N2 syllabus. Specific learning outcomes now require learners to explain the principle of operation of a DC motor and explain armature reaction. 
part of the learning outcomes of DC generators were previously covered in module five of the old N1 syllabus and the new, new learning outcomes that form part of this syllabus are methods to improve commutation, the difference between separately and self-excited generators, series, stunt, and compound generators. Module 7, alternating current machines, has a weighting of 10% and there are no calculation type questions. A large part of the learning outcomes of this module are from module 4 of the old syllabus. Three phase induction motor starters are no longer part of the syllabus and motor protection has been moved to module 4 of the syllabus. Module 8, Transformers. Many of the learning outcomes of Module 8 are from the old N1 syllabus and from Module 8 of the old N2 syllabus. This module has a weighting of 10%, comprising of 5% calculation type questions and 5% theory type questions. The learning outcomes of this module have been increased considerably. The new outcomes include e equivalent circuit diagram of a transformer working on no load, the vector diagram of a transformer working on no load, functions of the core loss and magnetizing components of the no load current. The learning outcomes concerning tap changes are no longer part of the syllabus. Many of the learning outcomes covered in Module 9 Earthing are from Module 5 of the old syllabus. This module has a weighting of 10% and there are no calculation type questions. This module no longer includes the following learning outcomes. System earthing, equipment earthing, earthing networks, earthing systems at power stations, and substations. Module 10, measuring instruments. Has a weighting of 6%, with 3% allocated to calculation type questions, and 3% allocated to theory type questions. Some of the learning outcomes in this module are from module seven of the old N2 syllabus. Range extension of galvanometers, as well as digital measuring instruments are new topics in this module. Module 11, renewable energy is a small module, which has a weighting of 4% with no calculation type questions. This is a brand new module introduced into this curriculum. The most important curriculum changes for 2021 are the increased number of modules from 9 to 11, the inclusion of 18% calculation type questions, and this is going to be most welcomed by learners who have in the past preferred calculation type questions over theory type questions. The inclusion of the following new topics, AC circuit theory, gel and lithium ion batteries, range extension of galvanometers, the use of digital measuring instruments, and renewable energy. This new curriculum sees the exclusion of the module on electronics, the principle of operation of measuring instruments, system and equipment earthing, earthing networks, earthing systems at power stations and substations, and three-phase induction motor starters. 
The TVET first electrical trade theory N2 book produced by Macmillan and Tropunt is aligned to the requirements of the new curriculum. Each module in the book matches with each module of the new 2021 syllabus. The modules and units of our book are aligned to the curriculum and use the same topics and subtopics as prescribed in the curriculum. We are going to take a look at how our book can help you in the classroom. It is, a, it is full of useful features that will help you and your learners to navigate your way through this new curriculum. Each module starts with an overview box that introduces the content to be covered in each module and lists all the learning outcomes from the curriculum. The overview box is followed by a starter activity, a class discussion designed to introduce learners to the content by relating it to things they are already familiar with. A summary of the content of each unit of each module is included at the end of the module, highlighting all the key points. These are excellent revision tools. We have used easy to follow explanations in simple language throughout, particularly for difficult sections. For example, resin joints are clearly described and the process for making a simple low voltage resin joint is described step by step. In some places, the book goes beyond the requirements of the topic in order to enhance understanding. This trend also allows for the foundation to be laid for sections to be discussed in later levels. The learning content is supported with comprehensive and carefully selected worked out examples to help learners understanding of difficult concepts and calculations. Lots of varied activities are provided throughout each module. These allow learners to get ample practice with all types of questions. All assessments and activities are modeled on exam type questions to ensure that learners succeed. Clear diagrams are included throughout the book to aid understanding. These will really help the learners who need to be able to draw circuit and wiring diagrams in their examinations. Photographs help the learners understanding and link what they are learning to the workplace. We tried to include all relevant regulations from SANS 10142 concerning the topics covered in these modules. Important information is displayed in important note boxes. Keywords are provided in the margins to assist learners with difficult terminology. Definition boxes highlight the important terminology. Tables are used throughout the book to make learning easier. Gray information boxes are used throughout the book to highlight the important formulae and important rules. The See It Online feature provides web links to broaden and enrich learners' understanding of some of the concepts covered in the book. Each module is concluded with a summative assessment these are indispensable for revision and examination preparation 
and are modeled on exam type questions. All the keywords, vocabulary and definitions from the book are included in a comprehensive glossary which provides an excellent reference for the students. The abbreviations and symbols used in this book are also listed at the back of the book for easy reference. Exam tips are included throughout the book to assist learners and there is a practice exam paper which learners can use for examination preparation. Our comprehensive lecturer's guide includes the following. Full solutions to all activities covered in the student book, curriculum mapping document, a lesson plan template, a suggested 10-week teaching plan, teaching guidelines and useful web links, two class tests with memoranda and analysis grids. Memoranda for the practice exam from the student's book. Attention is given to new and problem areas with unique instruction, for example, the relationship between the number of poles of an alternator and the frequency of a waveform is clearly explained. The calculation of instantaneous currents and EMFs explained in detail using suitable examples. And the examples lay a perfect foundation for the type of calculation learners will encounter in N3, N4, N5, and N6. The inclusion of a table to explain the symbols on the face of a digital measuring instrument. In this module, we've also included a detailed table explaining how a digital instrument is used to perform the various functions. How renewable energy resources are used to produce electricity is clearly explained and we have used photographs, tables, and diagrams to enhance the explanation. Electrical trade theory N2 will still be evaluated by means of two formal class tests and a final examination. All our activities and summative assessments are modeled on examination type questions. A practice class test one and practice class test two are provided in our lecturer's guide, including memos and analysis grids. A practice exam paper is provided in the student's book, the memo and analysis grid of which will be found in the lecturer's guide. This slide summarizes the features of the TVET First Electrical Series. All books in this new series will be available during this year. We have in this series, Electrical Trade Theory N1, N2 and N3, Electrotechnology N3, Electrotechniques N4, N5 and N6. If I may remind our colleagues, the new curriculums for N1 and N4 will be tested as from April of this year. Then the N2 and N5 new syllabus will be implemented at the beginning of the second trimester and the first exams conducted in August. The N3 electrical trade theory and N6 electrotechnics will be implemented in the third trimester with the first examination being in November. Colleagues, I hope and trust that you have found this presentation uh, beneficial. And if there's any questions that you would like to ask, I now hand over to Gan to conduct the next little part. But once again, thank you very much for giving us your valuable time. And I'm hoping that you would have benefited from this little presentation of mine. Over to you, Gan.
thank you very much, Sunil, for a thoroughly informative and uh, in-depth presentation. I'm sure those that have been listening to you would have benefited from today's session. There's no doubt about that. Uh, we've got some time, so I think it, let's make use of it quite fruitfully. Um, we'll give you the opportunity now to pose questions to, um, to Sunil. And I, I don't think we need to restrict it to just N2. If there's anything that you are, are struggling with in terms of N1 curriculum Im implementation, I'm, so sh I'm positive that Sunil will be able to um, tackle that or you can always provide you an answer later on. So uh, just raise your hand and unmute yourself and then we'll give you the opportunity to pose your question. Thank you very much for your attention. Who's going to be first? Okay, any feedback on today's session? How did you receive it? Do you think this is going to help you prepare adequately for curriculum implementation, trimester two? Positive, negative, anything that we can modify for the next round that we may look at? Yes, yeah, sir. How are you? Yes. yes. Uh, it's Mugondo here from Centurion. Yes, Mugombe. Yes, then I, I had the uh, Menir mentioned that the a new curriculum for N2 will be tested in April this year. So is he referring to the exam for T121, like the current one? Uh, Mr. Magundo, how are you? Hey, I'm good, Menier. <laughs> OK, let, let me, uh, uh, the N1 and N4 new syllabi. Yes are already implemented and the first examination will be April of 2021. Or oh, the current one. Yes. And oh. as I speak to you, examiners and moderators from all over the country have been flown into Pretoria and they yes. are currently realigning the exam papers to match the new curriculum. All right. The N2 and N5 will be implemented at the beginning of the second trimester of this year. The first examination will be conducted in August. Okay, so it will be the term two exam for N2 and N5. That's right. And the N3, uh, remember, electrotechnology, the curriculum is still the same, it hasn't changed. But the N3 electrical trade theory and N6 electrotechnics will be implemented third trimester of this year with the first examination being written in November of 2021. Okay, so basically the N3 electro um, ETT and the N6 yes. will be implemented in November, which is T3. Yes, yes. They will start teaching the new syllabus in the third trimester with the first exam in November. All right, thank you, Minir. Okay, Mr. Mugundo. I think yes. it's also it's also important for you to consider new textbooks at this stage for N2 and N5. Yes, that's because why you, I, I, you're not, I, I, you're not I, I, able to I, do I, all I, curriculum I, N2 books and N5. So now's an opportune time, and we have been distributing sample copies uh, to every campus. Yes, that's what I'm saying. I, I I indicated in the comment that I'm happy that we are using these books. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, yeah. Manshadi. Please go ahead. Good afternoon, colleagues. Uh, this is Ms. Kutani from Sidibong College 
Farenahan campus. Colleagues, I would just like to thank you for a very informative session that we have just had. Some of the things, they are now clear. Now we understand what is it, it is, is, is expected from us as uh, colleagues. Uh, since the syllabuses have changed, we also appreciate the fact that the department has called the examiner to come and redo the question paper so that they can be aligned with the new syllabus. That will will be beneficiary for us and for our students. It's a it's really a great thing if students and uh, and lecturers are working together uh, on this new syllabus so that all of us, we can understand what is it that is, has been implemented and how is it beneficial for us in the future. Uh, colleagues, I also, I have a question on uh, electrotechnology, uh, sorry, electrotechnics N4. Uh, there is a new, new chapters also there that have been implemented. So I'm asking if it is possible for lecturers who are teaching that subject that we meet and maybe discuss because there are new topics and we are not even sure of, though we do uh, have the new textbooks, which at least they help us to make, um, they help us to clarify some of the things that we couldn't understand. But I would like, if it is possible, maybe for lecturers who are teaching techniques and for to have a session where this new, not on theorem, maybe they can be explained further so that when we now go back to students and explain them, then we are really sure of what we are doing. Thank you very much, colleagues. Thank you, Manshadi, for that uh, wonderful feedback. Did we meet yesterday at Farinathan, by the way? Oh, I saw you with Mr. Stolle. I was there in the office, but we didn't talk. Oh, great. So you've got the new books. That's great. Yes, I okay. do. Thank Sunil, you very much. Yeah. Sunil, you know, just pick up about the Electrotechnics M4, about meeting and just uh, um, going through the uh, changes in the curriculum. Ma'am, thank you very much uh, for your positive feedback. Um, Macmillan did not do a webinar on N4 Electrotechnics yet. Um, what I want to find out is, do you have a copy of the book from Tropan Macmillan? Yes, I do have. Okay. Um, if if you uh, uh, peruse that book, you will realize that at N4 level, they've brought in one change. They have brought in Norton's theorem as a yes. new topic. Um, if, we, if you recall, Norton's theorem was done in communication electronics. And there's some parts of the magnetism section that has been removed. When, when you look at the manner in which I've presented Norton's theorem, uh, I have, I've written it in a way I would want you, uh, my colleagues, to present it to their learners. I have simplified that into three steps. But at any time, you are more than welcome to call me. If you are in the area or we can meet or telephonically, I can go through Norton's theorem with you if you are having any difficulty with it. I will appreciate that very much, Sam. Okay. Yeah. I, in the chat, you will find my email address. So if you send me an email, I'll put you in contact with Sunil. I think that's the best way to do it. Oh, so if okay. you look at the Thank you very much. I've included my email here. And then just make a note of it. And uh, yeah, send me your details and I'll pass it on to Sunil so he can make contact with you. Thank you, Sam. Okay, uh, great. I, I also want to inform you if if there's any section or any topic in these electrical syllabi that are giving you difficulty, please contact Tropan. They will contact me, or you can contact me directly. I am yet to help all of our colleagues. Hello. Hello. Again, can yes. you still hear me? I can hear uh, you. Okay. Yeah, colleagues, uh, please pass the word around uh, for the presentation that we are going to be having for N5 electrotechnics. Just quickly, there are no significant changes to the curriculum, but the presentation is going to be to help uh, the 
educators present the material. And I'm sure Tropan Macmillan will later in this year arrange for an N6 webinar to be presented. There again, there are no changes, significant changes to the curriculum, but the presentation of certain sections I know is problematic. So, so please, please uh, inform your colleagues, inform friends from other institutions that they need to, to log in. There's quite a bit that I want to share with them, especially with the N5 and N6. Thanks for that, right, Sunil. You, okay, next person, please just raise your hand. We'll give you the opportunity to speak. Okay, I'm not seeing any more hands. So on that note, I'd like to thank all of you for your time this afternoon. We know that all of you are very busy, but having said that, I think you would have benefited tremendously from today's presentation. And you've got our contact details, so please make, please make use of that. And um, I'll put you in touch with Sunil, should you have anything further that you didn't want to raise at this forum. Uh, yeah, just um, uh, we will send out the invitation for the Electrotechnics N5. If you haven't received it as yet, please check with your HODs, but we will send out a reminder in the next few days. Thank you, Sunil. Thank you again. Presentation. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Manir. Thank you. Thank you.